everyone! So today we're going to be doing Ask Danielle because I didn't have enough footage from the weekend to turn into a vlog, so we're doing Ask Danielle. I asked you guys on Snapchat and Instagram, and I was really surprised to see how many of you guys actually responded through Instagram, so I'll be sure to keep going through there. Be sure to follow me on either one of those if you want to participate in the next one. Of course, as usual, I'm going to start with Snapchat, the actual videos, and I got probably close to about 50 people writing comments, but only two of you sent videos. So you guys are being shy. So the first video is from Panda. Okay, let's just see if there's something wrong with Snapchat here. This is from Panda. I just wanted to ask you about um, weight loss. So I'm a type two diabetic. I was diagnosed two and a half years ago, and I also just had heart surgery. I just wanted to ask you about um, weight loss. So I'm a type 2 diabetic. I was diagnosed two and a half years But my diabetes can be reversed if I lose like 20 to 30 pounds. I'm like 158. But my diabetes can be reversed if I lose. Anyway, so sorry for all these messages. But anyways, I'm like 158 and my cardiologist also wants me to lose 20 to 30 pounds. Um, Anyway, so sorry for all these messages. Snapchat is acting funny. I'm a very emotional eater and I struggle with depression and um, so I tend to um, struggle with that. So uh, I'm having hard but I am a, I'm having a hard time with weight loss. <laughs> so anyways, um, I know that you had a weight loss journey and I've been following on YouTube and you are amazing for a long time. I'm having a hard time. So I've been following you in your weight loss journey and just want to see if you have some tips for me for starting out um, eating healthy and to lose some pounds and motive. So I've been following And excuse the um, crazy messy look, but just um, I threw my boyfriend's t-shirt on today in just a relaxing kind of day. Okay, Amanda. So, um, don't worry. I'm... <laughs> You see me on the vlogs every day. <laughs> I never look together. So I can totally relate to you in in some ways about being an emotional eater and things like that. I think what helped me the most in my weight loss journey was finding people through YouTube like you found me who inspire you. Like I feel like having that fire and that inspiration is definitely a huge motivation. I think honestly what keeps me on the healthy route is looking at a lot of food porn is what I like to call it of like healthy plant-based meals. If you're somebody who's like really not into the idea of vegetarianism or veganism because you think like the food's not gonna taste good or even if it's not a vegan or vegetarian meal you just generally aren't really appealed to like healthy looking meals. I think definitely like checking out YouTubers like Bonnie Rebecca, High Carb Hannah, all of these people who throw out a lot of really good healthy meal recipe videos as well as just a lot of food porn, it kind of like instills something in your brain and you really start craving the food and the images that you've seen. So I have definitely found that um, just finding people who are really creative with foods and like really good at making things really easy and um, at the same time like accessible and affordable. I'm also starting some recipe videos on the beauty channel which I will put in the description box and I will be starting to talk a little bit more about my weight loss journey. I have gone about it briefly. I haven't really talked about it as much in detail like especially with my weight loss tips as in detail as High Carb Hannah for instance has but I really feel like I should because I have lost over a hundred pounds um, in my lifetime. I think the huge attributor to that is veganism and obviously I've always lived a pretty healthy lifestyle. I've always been a pretty healthy um, active person but I can tell you that my diet was really um, hindering me in that way. Like I was feeling really um, I didn't have as much energy to do the kind of high impact exercise that I can do now. There's a lot of um, really good documentaries I can recommend to you to go watch. My favorite is Forks Over Knives, and that's just a little look into um, eating more plant-based foods. Maybe you don't want to go 100% vegan, but I definitely think that humans were designed to be eating primarily 
plant-based foods. Also, for me, I do keep it a little bit lower in fat than I have in the past. Like you can be an unhealthy vegan too, and I do find when I start eating um, foods that are higher in fat, and when I start cooking with oils again, I do find myself starting to put the weight back on. So it's not just the animal products. I think that um, having a healthy fat ratio in your diet, and obviously you don't wanna go too low either because there have been people who have lost like their periods and stuff like that from doing that. That's not a good idea. But in our, in our society, we tend to consume a lot of fat kind of subconsciously. It's just kind of how we're used to eating. Everybody's used to slathering all their, cooking all their food in oil and um, all this stuff. I think getting rid of the oil has really helped me as well. I wish you the best luck on your journey, Amanda, and be sure to keep me updated on it because I'll be interested to hear how things go. And I'm really, really happy to see how optimistic you are about um, reversing your diabetes because yes, type two diabetes is 100% reversible. I thought this was a really cool question. Um, by Kiara Mole, will you employ a doula when you're having your next child? I thought this was such a good question and I'm going to do such a bad job at selling doulas, I guess, right now, and that's not really a good idea. It's not really what I'm used to doing. I'm usually trying to sell my services, but actually, no. I don't think I would ever hire a doula, and this was something that I realized from the moment that I found out that I was going to be a doula, and I found it a little bit weird that I wouldn't find my services not that I wouldn't find them useful, it's more just a, like a personal thing. Like I personally feel like I birth better in solitude and I don't, and I know that you can be a doula and be kind of in the background, but generally so far from what I've seen people who want doulas, I mean, not all, there have been a couple people that have wanted me as a doula who wanted me to be kind of in the background, but I would feel uncomfortable spending that kind of money to have somebody in a background because here in Munich, doulas cost quite a bit of money, including myself. <laughs> so I don't think I would hire somebody just to have there in the background to help me when things start getting tough. I feel like hubby and I, we've done it twice and um, I think I would maybe consider hiring a doula if I had like some sort of traumatic experience for the postpartum time. But I feel like, um, for handling the birth, I just really need it to be very intimate, to be honest, to be completely honest. Even the midwife's presence kind of set me a little bit off and it slowed my labor down for quite a while after she arrived. I prefer to labor in solitude and intimacy with my husband. Um, so I don't think I would ever hire a doula. Next is by Lolo Sadit. How are you planning to juggle a career while having another child? I'm trying to find the balance so I can have baby number two. I keep putting it off to reach my career goals and milestones, but my daughter is three and I'm getting close to that age gap I didn't want for my first and second. I totally relate to you right now. Oh my gosh, like this has been like my struggle for so long and this actually is something I haven't talked about, but one of the main reasons we've decided to have the third child is because it's kind of, for me too, it's starting to get to that undesirable age gap. Um, part of me would really like to just do my thing, do my career, but another part of me is like, well, if I do that, and then I've got two kids that are basically school age, and then I have all this free time, and then I want to go back to doing the whole, you know, being at home for two years and then diapers, I just kind of figured I'm already in the zone, so I've just decided to kind of go for it with having the kids. Now we have a big enough place. Um, I feel like the doula business is going well, and I feel like I'll be able to, I feel like this year is going to be really, really fun, and I do plan on working while pregnant so long as I have a, a normal pregnancy like I've had in the past. I mean, you never know, hopefully. <laughs> But yeah, it's not easy. I think this is just a huge struggle for all women is just finding that balance between having that career and um, raising your family and trying to find a way to marry the two together somehow. Um, I've kind of decided what I want to do since I've already started having kids so young is I kind of wanted to try to finish as young as possible. Four is pretty much the maximum amount of kids that I want and I've pretty much decided that I don't want to have any kids after 32 just so I know for sure that starting at a young age, I kind of reap the benefits of sort of um, retiring at a young age, you know, once they're all out of the house and doing their own things. Um, of course, they will always be my children and I will always want them to come home and visit me all the time. Hopefully they're out there being 
you know, doing their own things and doing well in the world. It's really, really tricky to figure out that balance for sure. But yeah, we have decided to go ahead and go for baby number three um, relatively soon here just because I think that it would be better for the child because I see there's a lot of fighting between Olivia and Leia, but I see that bond that they have at the end of the day and I feel like I don't want the third child to feel too left out of the loop. Um, and especially in case that ends up being our last. So that's pretty much the way I've thought about it. Okay, so I have a question actually from my friend from high school, Courtney. If you guys have, um, if you guys have watched the vlogs when we were in California, she was in that video. If you haven't seen it, I'll put it right there. So here's her question. My question for Ask Danielle is, would you guys ever name your third child Courtney? It's a beautiful name, cool people have it, and it's unisex, maybe a middle name. <laughs> um, I don't know, I don't really think it really goes with our naming style, it is a really cool name. I think I'm gonna stick to names that go a little bit more with Olivia and Leia, just, I don't know, Olivia, Leia, and Courtney. I don't really think it works. Okay, I got quite a long question, which I think we're going to end with now by Rainbow in the Forest. Hi, Danielle. I would like to know if you used any specific modalities to improve your state of being when it comes to moving, getting a bigger house with a garden and it's a huge shift and getting more clients and income. I'm in a similar position like you were before. It seemed like you did a great job on deserving and changing core benefits. I know you mentioned meditation, but I'd be interested in any seemingly minor things that gave you so much positive change in return. So I'm actually going to be uploading a video really soon on the beauty channel called the law of attraction, creative visualization. These are tools which I do feel like I used into manifesting. I feel like what's going on in my life right now. And I think that, you know, praying or sending things out to the universe and meditating about it. And I think you can even take things to the next level by really visualizing what you want um, on a regular basis. And it actually really does come true. I think that the power of the mind is incredibly underestimated. And I think people work harder sometimes than is necessary in order to manifest things. Not to say that I'm not a hard worker, but I do feel like spending time creating positive thoughts um, is worthwhile, <laughs> is basically what I'm saying. So taking time to clear your head and taking time to reprogram your thought patterns is just as beneficial as working your butt off all the time. You know what I mean? Like you have to find some sort of balance in between the two and I will be talking about that on the beauty channel. Another reason it would be good to subscribe to the beauty channel right now is I have completed vlogging five days a week for a whole month, but I feel like that's a little bit unrealistic unless I wanna let go of the beauty channel completely because I have found no time to upload on that channel with five days a week on this channel. So I think if you guys wanna see more recipe videos, more spiritual videos, more DIYs, we're gonna do three days a week on Baby Channel and two days a week on the Beauty Channel, so be sure to follow me on both if you wanna see me five days a week. And yeah, that's all I'm gonna answer for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did, and I will see you guys next time.